Hello, it's me, beautiful people. I got another video. Um, not a dream, um, but during the day, while I was working on things, um, it came to me. Flood, 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 flood. Days of Noah, flood. And then there was a connection made, and then up spark right okay i'll explain <clears throat> jesus yeshua said in matthew 24 verse 37 but as in the days of noah were so also will be will the coming of the son of man be he's talking about when he's coming back is this the second coming or is this the rapture to take us out doesn't say, but it says, you know, they'll be like the days of Noah, but, but, but as in the days of Noah were. So, Luke 17, verse 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, so will it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Okay, that's both direct red letter words quoting the Messiah. 1 Peter 3, verse 20, who were formerly disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waiting in the days of Noah while in the ark was being prepared in, in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through water. Okay? Um, now that saved through water because of the flood and they got on the ark. They went in seven days. Um, let me jump down there really quick. Let's see. Um, I should have had this marked out. Uh, so they were saved through water. Think about that. We get baptized in the water to share in the death of Yeshua, and then being risen out of the water, a representation of him rising from the, the dead. Um, he was died on the cross, shed his blood for us, right? To pay for our iniquities and sin, and given us his righteousness. But, okay, he died on the cross. Three days he was in the grave, and then he rose on the third day. Just like Jonah was three days, three nights in the belly of the whale. He was in the water, and then he came out. Um, baptism, the rep representi representation of dying to the fleshly body and being alive in the spirit. Um, so, they were in the ark. Noah was, right? So, how long? Seven days. Um, let me see if I can find it. Sorry, I should have had this all prepared. It's, uh, yeah, here it is. Um, Genesis 7-11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day, um, the w fountains of the deep broke and were broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. So there was water coming from below, and waters coming from above. Um, and on that same day, Noah and his wife and the, his three sons and their wives entered in the ark okay now he was he was told in genesis 7 verse 4 for after seven days i will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights and i will destroy it from the from the face of the earth um all living things which i've made um a face is flat just to let you know um and so they waited seven days. 
And then on the 16th day, or on the seventh day, which is Genesis, Genesis 7, verse 16, so those that entered, male and female, all the flesh, went in as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut the door. Okay? It's the Lord that says, okay, it's time. Right? We're under grace at the moment. So what's the point? Well, it's the 7th of December. In seven days, it'll be 14th. The 14th of December. Simple math, right? 7 plus 7 is 14. What's on the 14th day? The 8th day of Hanukkah. That last great day. The Festival of Lights. Um, the winter uh, festival or feast where Jesus went up in secret in their midst and then he appeared. Just saying. Um, so, what does this mean? Genesis chapter 9, verse 29. So all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. Well, what's 950? That's a 9, a 5, and a 0. Well, 0 is empty, right? Has no meaning, basically, or, or um, it's kind of a placeholder in the sense. Uh, it, it does indicate that there's a, a, a digit there. Otherwise, it'd be 95, right? Um, but if you take away the 0, you're left with 95. What's 9 plus 5? 14, okay, pointing to that 14th day, he, you know, after he shut him in. So, what does this all mean? Well, he's going to make a promise, a perpetual promise, a covenant between Noah And it's also um, never to destroy the earth again with a flood. It says in Genesis chapter 9, verse 11, Thus I have established my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between you and me and your descendants, right? Between you, between me and you and every living creature that is in, that is with you for perpetual generations. And I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be a sign for a covenant between me and you. Now notice, he says me and you. Who comes first? God comes first, then us. All right, And it shall be, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant. Okay. Never to destroy, never, to, never again by become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it. Remember everlasting covenant. It's, it's everlasting. This is always his covenant. What is a covenant? It's a contract. It's agreement between two entities, two people, right? In Genesis chapter 9, verse 17, And God said to Noah, This is a sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Now, that's his promise. Check out my cup. Thank you, God. Uh, you know, it's not a symbol of what Satan and Lucifer has flipped, where it's a promise of God, I'm never going to flood the earth with a bunch of water. Now, the next one, he's going to flood it with fire. That's what's coming. Okay, and everything shall be burned up. Um, but what does this mean? What's the point of my ranting and raving about 
Noah and the days of flood. Well, it's going to be the time, the season, a pointer. Um, there's, you can see in Genesis chapter 6, there is wickedness in man's heart to do continually evil. Um, there was giants. Well, we haven't seen them yet. Um, but there is all flesh corrupted. Genesis chapter 6, verse 12. In fact, read Genesis 6, 7, 8, and 9. But um, it says, so God, so God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. All flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And he says, the end of flesh has come to me because the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He will destroy them with the earth. The earth is a tool. Weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, famines. Well, what causes famine? Uh, no grain, no wheat, no vegetables, no fruit, right? Now, <clears throat> why was it corrupted? All the flesh. That's all flesh. That means animals, birds, reptiles, insects, you know, um, and man. And also Nephilim. What are Nephilim? Um, you can read in Genesis chapter 1. Now the, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, okay, and they had daughters born to them. The sons of God, which are angels, saw the daughters and saw that they were beautiful, and they took them, as many as they chose, and they had offspring. Well, if there's angels and there's women of man, right, they become half-breeds, hybrids. Um, old mythologies calls them demigods. Half man, half angel, or half god. You know, so, which also means that they corrupted animals and birds and all sorts of stuff. So that's when God said, okay, it's no longer pure the way I created it. How do we know this? Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Just means righteous, or just means justified. Okay? Perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Think about that. He didn't take the corruption that was going on. Everybody was doing it. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, and they were just living their lives, buying and selling, and doing whatever. He walked with God. He was separate even though he was living with them, but he was separated in the sense of he wasn't going to be corrupted. Okay, that's a hint. Now, what else was the connection for what I saw? And this was just today. October 7th, 2023, an event happened. I think it was planned, but that's my, you know, perspective on it. Um, all, uh, how do you pronounce? I can't pronounce it. I don't know. Well, I'll give it a try. If I ruin it, I'm sorry. All Osk flood. That's what they called it, right? A flood. A flood of enemies. A flood of. Okay, so. That's what happened. Invasion, flood, whatever you want to call it, right? Just a bad thing. Now, either yesterday or today, the other side, um, in that place in the Middle East, are flooding tunnels. Water. Only God could set this up where I'm going to make the um, one group over there on a tiny little strip of land, you know, I'll try and avoid the names just because Uncle Algorithm is listening. Um, and now, the opponents 
of them that used to have a temple, okay, we'll put it that way, you can read between the lines, are now flooding the tunnels. And what did Jesus say, Yeshua? He said, But as the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Eating, drinking, giving in marriage, buying, selling, um, <clears throat> and corrupting the flesh. Again. Okay? The enemy is always trying to uh, derail Father God's plans. And yet, every single time, he uses it, uses evil for good. Think about that. God is using Lucifer and Satan and, and the uh, fallen angels and the demons and, you know, all of that evil crap and using it for his purposes. He's allowing it. People say, why does he allow it? Well, he gives you free will. You can choose to accept his son who paid the ultimate price of giving up his life, shedding his blood, dying in our place, Remember, there's two thieves on the cross. One acknowledged that, yes, I deserve this. I've been a sinner. I'm being punished for my evil deeds. And I deserve this. You're innocent. You don't deserve this. The other thief was absolutely arrogant and proudful and going, hey, if you really are, there's that if again, right? Always doubt, you know. Um, then save yourself and save me, you know. But that wasn't the point. He could, he could easily have gotten off that cross or called out to Father and said, send me a legion of angels. He told Pontius Pilate that. He goes, but I'm here to serve this purpose, to do this. Why? Because it's the only way that man could be saved. Through Moses was the law. Well, we can't keep the law. Our righteousness is like filthy rags, right? Okay, we're not good enough. Only... One person was born sinless and remained sinless, and that was Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Why? Because you can only exchange one for the other. I'll take your sins, you take my righteousness. If he wasn't righteous and sinless, it wouldn't work. <clears throat> so, um, that's salvation, and it's a free gift of God. In Romans, the wages of sin is death. So, but the free gift of God is eternal life. You get eternal life through his son. Okay. And in 1 Corinthians, right, according to the scripture, he died according to the scriptures, which is the Old Testament. Um, <clears throat> and then he was buried and raised again three days later. So what's the promise? Well, if you look at Abraham, there's different promises, covenants, and conditions. Right? Promise? Jesus says, I'm coming back for you. I have to go, but I will come back. And I'm not going to leave you alone. I'll send you a comforter. The Holy Spirit, which is, which is his spirit. It says this in Galatians. Right? It's his spirit. Holy Spirit that dwells in us being sealed and waiting for the day of redemption um, he made a covenant which I told you about it's a contract it's agreement you know with Abraham through your seed many nations will be blessed whose seed Seed of Adam? Yes. Seed of Abraham? Yes. Now, it didn't say seeds, plural. It's one seed. Okay? Who was that promise directed to? Yeshua, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Many nations will be blessed through him. What is a nation? A nation is a group of people. A kingdom is a group of of many nations ruled by one king, right? You can look at um, Nebuchadnezzar, Artaxerxes, Alexander, right? They all had these massive kingdoms, but many nations were within their kingdom. 
okay? Different people, different tribes, you know? But they all were under his authority. Um, thank you, God. <clears throat> that was what happened in Nebuchadnezzar. He's like, look at my massive kingdom, and look what I've done. His pride, okay? And God humbled him. And finally he came to the senses and says, okay, you know what? You're God. You gave me this kingdom. It's not for me and my pride, you know. How can I use the kingdom that you've given me to glorify you? Did he, you know, um, attack Israel? Sure, and a bunch of other countries. So did the Assyrians. So did the Egyptians, right? God uses his creation now, these kingdoms and nations and peoples, they're all his creation, right? He can do as he chooses because he is God Almighty. He's omnipotent, omnipowerful, right? Um, who are we as clay to tell the potter, why did you make me this way? Or why did you do this? It's his sovereign will. He can do as he pleases. You if you're Catholic, you go to church and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, guess what? His kingdom, heaven, right? He's reigning in, in heaven right now over all creation. We're asking for him to have his kingdom here on earth. It's coming, right? His will will be done. That means nobody's going to do something outside of his will. Right now, on earth, well, we've already had flood. Number one, that was Noah. Now, this other flood through Alaska flood, that they call it, right? Um, and now they're flooding the tunnels with seawater. Yeah, God's showing us a sign. We're that close. We're that close for his son to come and get us. Um, because he said, I'm going away. I'm going to go prepare a place for you. I mean, think about it. The last 2,000 years, he's been making a place for us. Of course, in Second Peter, it says a 1,000 years is like a day to him. So he's been gone two days. He waited two days. Well, where else did he wait two days? Hmm, Lazarus. Yes, he was waiting and he was told, hey, uh, Lazarus is dead. And he goes, well, I'll just wait. Okay. He waited two days. And then he came to Mary and Martha and uh, told Martha, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? And he raised Lazarus. What did they do? They rolled back the stone and he called out to him, cried out to him with a loud voice. Hmm. Earth Thessalonians? Mm-hmm. The Lord himself will descend in the clouds and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. Ba -ba -da! Go get him, right? Promised. He said he's coming back to get us. He's made a place for us, right? Um, how soon? His timing is not our timing. He lives outside of time and space and everything, right? This applies to the natural, the physical. He's in the spiritual world. Totally different rules and everything else. Um, yeah. Um, the enemy, for some apparent reason, law or whatever, but I have a good feeling or, or good understanding why. Movies, TV, ads, radio, lyrics to songs, um, print, uh, everything, right, is being put in front of us, whether we realize it or not, so that we have no excuse. What do I mean? Well, in the New Testament it says, there's one life to live and then comes judgment. We all have to stand before the great throne of judgment and give an account of what we've done, good or bad, right? Everything we've said, everything we've done. Um, if the enemy, he doesn't have to tell us straight up. Now God gives us his word. As much as, you know, the enemy has tried to, to mess it up. 
um, the intent is still there. So he tells us plainly with also proverbs or uh, parables um, to keep it hidden from the enemy, but he gives us spiritual eyes to see. So between God telling Moses, the prophets, and everybody else, telling us, because a whole lot of stuff in here hasn't happened yet. The sun turns dark at noon. Well, it did during the cross for three hours, which I think that timing applies to a future um, sixth seal, which Joel saw, you know, and a lot of the prophets saw this exact same vision, you know, described a little bit differently. The sun goes dark at noon, you know, the moon is like blood, there's a great earthquake, you know, um, these are all signs. So, eventually, the Abrahamic covenant and his promise to bless the nations, the people, through Yeshua, Jesus Christ, when he comes and sets up his kingdom here on earth, remember, we're asking him, you know, he taught us how to pray. Pray that the kingdom of God will be here on earth. And it will be. Well, when that happens, evil's done for. Right? The wheat and the tares, Matthew 13. Um, the evil is bundled and thrown in the fire, burned up like chaff and blown away in the wind. You know, but the wheat is put in the barn. And we're supposed to pray that we are counted worthy to escape his wrath and be able to stand for him, stand before him. Um, in the Bible, it says that great and terrible day, who can stand? Well, those that believe, that have the faith that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, HaMashiach, is their Savior, right? And he paid the ultimate, ultimate price. He just has to come back and claim us, right? It's like he got a ticket. You know, um, to a claim ticket. And so he paid the claim ticket, left his coat, went away on a journey, came back and said, okay, I want to claim my coat. You know, I have a will call claim ticket. You're holding my jacket. I want my coat back. Okay, here it is. You know, and there's an exchange. Here's a ticket and I get my coat back. Well, guess what? He's done the same with us spiritually. Um, he's given us the deposit, the Spirit as a guarantee until the day of redemption. What's the day of redemption? To redeem us. I've already paid for it. I shed the blood. You know, you're covered in the blood, and I'm coming back to get you. I'm going to punish the evil ones. He says, I'm a slaughtering king. He's also a, um, a redeeming king. He are a kingsman redeemer. So I think that this, what he showed me, is a marker, a sign, a sign of the time. We're in the seasons, right? To show that in the physical world, they're announcing on the news, and these things are happening, that there is floods. Flood of people, flood of water. Yet, in the secular, it's like, Okay, you know, they're they're uh, invading this country, and so we'll call it a flood. All right? And then here we're going to retaliate and flood your tunnels with seawater, not knowing that they're doing the will of God, that they're going through the motions. He set it up, and he gave us his timing of things in his word. In fact, when he was on the earth, ah, sorry, thing, um, he told us, Matthew 24, Luke 17. But as in the days of Noah, here you go. Now look around. Are we seeing in our lifetime the days of Noah and what they were doing before the flood? Right up to it. In fact, for seven days, Noah sat in that ark with the door open and all the animals, everything in it, going, okay, God, you told me to get in, you know, and then he shut the door. Bam! That's it. Done. That's from God going from, I'm on the mercy seat. That's the whole thing about the ark, right? The ark of the covenant. Also the ark that Noah got on. He sat on the mercy seat going, I'm offering mercy. 
there's grace. Um, I'm going to now move judgment seat. Right? We don't know that time frame, but at some point, he's closing the door. Right? And that's in um, Revelations chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Right? Let me go there real quick. Um, <clears throat> just because I can. Um, because you have kept my command to persevere. Just keep persevering. We know he's coming. Right? I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth. What trial? An hour of trial. In one hour comes destruction. When they say peace and safety. Right? Revelations 3.10. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have. Nobody may take your crown. Um, but, Revelations 3, verse 7. To the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Right. These things, he says, is who is holy, he who is true. Now, we know who's holy and true. That's our Messiah. He who has the key of David, who opens and no one shuts, and shuts, and no one opens. Okay? Revelations 3.8. Right? There's a door. Noah, same thing. Okay? I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. I know, And no one can shut it. For you have little strength, and have kept my word, and I have not denied my name. All right? Door's open. Here we are. I don't know if this is the seven days, and all of a sudden he's going to close it. On the 14th, on uh, the last great day, on Hanukkah. It's coming as a thief. Nobody knows the day or hour, right? Well, that applies to the heaven and earth passing away. That's right before the judgment. But it's not the same. Um, and he says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, Indeed, I will make some of those of the synagogue of Satan, the church of Satan, or the kingdom of Satan, right? Who say they are Jews that are not, but lie. Okay? So remember that. All these things you see in the news and everything else, are they really the true Jews or Israelites? You'll know their fruit by their actions, right? Is there love? Is there hate? Um... Forgiveness and mercy, right? Now, he says in the Old Testament that sacrifice I do not want. Um, I desire mercy and justice, not sacrifice. They want to build a new temple and do sacrifices again. But Yeshua already paid the price on the cross. He said, it's finished. It's done. They put the sour wine, which was vinegar, on hyssop up to his mouth, right? And then he said, it's done. The sour wine or vinegar um, has a meaning. I don't know exactly what it all means, but it, it's something that's a, a, a marker, a point, or an event that um, points to the future. I also know that there's something in the Old Testament about the sour wine and the hyssop. Um, but I'll look into it. Um, but yeah, why should he suffer on the cross again and again daily? Uh, he shouldn't. Uh, he did it once and paid the price. It's finished. It's done. Will you accept it, right? Um, to believe that he paid that price. He's covered your disobedience. Anyways, love you guys, and see you in the next video. Or in the clouds. Who knows?